welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Tuesday night. And for those of you who join us on Tuesday night, you know that it's Bible study time. It's well, Let's study together, okay? Um, I am Apostle Sherelle Sanders with Greater Revelation World Outreach Ministries. For those of you who don't follow and it's your first time tuning in, um, I have to share this to our church page. If you're not already following us, follow us on Facebook, Greater Revelation World Outreach Ministries. And we are also on Instagram for the in inspirational quotes and things of of, of such. Um, and that is GRW is love. All the information is actually should be posted under me. I think I, I think I did post it. Yes, I did. Yes, 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 yes. All right. I'm going to share to the share to the church page for those of those who are not on my personal page. Want to make sure that they're getting the message on tonight. I am always, uh, I'm always excited about the word of God. I'm always excited when people, um, when people uh, are going through different things and they can see the word of God after it's been absorbed, penetrating and, and resolving and healing and restoring. Okay. So I've, I've got myself together a little bit. So tonight, um, the message for tonight is fighting the endless war. Some of you, listen, some of you, and I'm, I, and I'm, I'm an advocate for living this thing. I'm an advocate for making it through. I feel like the ecclesiastical preacher, I feel like the, uh, the, the preacher in ecclesiastic, it's like chasing the wind, arguing with people, chasing the wind, worried about what my neighbor is doing, chasing the wind. I am more focused now on how can I have the quality of life that's, that's written about, written about in the word of God, the quality of life that we quote all the scriptures about, but oftentimes we walk around and we don't exemplify the scriptures that we, that we quote. So I am more focused on doing that and helping you achieve that, okay? So we're in this thing together. We have been talking about, I'll always do a recap of where we are. I told you this year, our job at Greater Rev Revelation, our job was going to be teaching you the mechanics of it. We talk about all the time that we've always been told if you if you uh, have been in church for a while or you've been around church people and, you know, yes, church is within us, but you know the traditional church. Um, if you've been there, you know that you're always instructed on what not to do. You're always instructed on what the consequences are when you do them, but then it's oftentimes people People don't tell us how we accomplish it. How do we, how do we not do this? How do we stay this way? How, how do we stay strong? How, how do we live the process? Because that's the thing. Everybody wants the end results. Everybody wants the microwave thing, but they don't always teach us how to get through the process. We oftentimes as leaders get on here and we tell our testimony about, and this was what I was going through. And it sounds so awesome after you've came out and, and, and after you've been through that, but the snotting and the crying and the, the snotting and the, 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 the falling out and the, I can't take no more moments that even leaders go through where, where you're not always privy to. So you don't know the mechanics of how they actually got out. You don't know how how it how they operated or how they processed through that thing. So that's what we're being that's what we're dedicating our teachings to this year. We want to we want you to know how this thing is done so you can apply it to your life so it can be effective so you can get those end results. Tonight fighting the endless war. I don't know about you, definitely been in a situation where it seems like battle after battle after, and I was worn out. I just, I, I always, I told you, I said, I can't take anymore. I'm tired, Lord. Uh, I just had more than I could bear. There have been times when I didn't even want to be here anymore because I was just disgusted with my, my results. I was disgusted with my process and not knowing how to relieve the pain, not knowing how to relieve the symptoms. Just, I was steadily confessing how tired I was, confessing what I was going through, confessing my pain. And always, it was always magnified before me to a point that I wasn't, I found myself not doing it the right way, not finding the right pathway out, but standing in it, just talking about it. 
I was not moving to process through it. I was standing in it and, and not making any moves to get out of it. I was just waiting on God. I know God wouldn't give me more than I could bear. I know that if God loved me, he got to do something. And then you get to that mode that maybe God doesn't love you. Maybe God has forsaken you. Maybe you've done so much, God is not going to help you out. You know, you've got all these things that run through your mind because it's just been so much warfare. One thing after another, we call it that domino effect. When one thing happens, another thing happens and another thing happens. Well, that's the story of my life. It has been that, that has been the story of my life. That when one thing happens, you can expect a few things coming afterwards. It's, it's, it's because I'm a heavy hitter and you are a heavy hitter as well. When you get things like that, I want to see you guys. When you get things like that, you're a heavy hitter and the enemy knows that one blow won't take you out. The enemy knows that one thing won't take you out. The enemy knows that one thing won't cause you to quit. One thing won't cause you to give up. So if you're a heavy hitter in this thing, he'll usually give you a couple back to back to back to back to back. Right when you thought, you just got a little piece from the first thing. Here comes another thing. Here comes somebody being used to aggravate the situation. Here comes some family things. Here comes some financial things. Back to back to back. And the object is so you won't get that opportunity. I always talk about the ring. Even the best fighters go into their corner for rest so they can get instructions, so they can get restored, so they can get ready for the next, for the next round. So the enemy doesn't want you to get that time out, doesn't want you to be able to get Get restored. The enemy wants you to get worn out so you can get be out for the count. So he can't do it. So what he does is he enlists us. He enlists us to help him with his strategy. And how do we do that? Because we stand in the midst of it and we talk about it and we talk about how frustrating it is. We talk about the, the situation. We talk about how we feel about the situation. We talk about all the things that's tr that are tr that's transpiring. And we do so much talking about that. We add weight. We add, we add help to him and help to the situation instead of talking our way out, instead of declaring declaring, decreeing that that thing is done, that the victory is already won. So I had something today. Um, I'm, I, I used to say it. If you look on some of my older videos, you're going to say, well, Pastor used to say this. Yes, I used to say it. When you know better, you do better. Um, I said, man, I'm a fighter. I am a fighter. I fight. I'm going to fight no matter what. And I thought that was a, a good thing that I'm a fighter. I don't give up. I'm resilient. Well, I don't know about you, but even if you were a fighter, if you're a fighter in the world, when you get to be a certain age, when you get to be a certain age, you, you less likely want to brawl. You less likely want to go out and do all of that fighting. You know, you don't want to do all of the physical part that it takes to do all of that. You don't want to do that. So that's where I am in God. It's like I've aged in this thing and I've gotten to a point that I don't feel like wrestling. I don't feel like getting, I don't feel like the tug of war anymore. I don't feel like waiting 9,000 years for answers to my prayers. I don't want to do that. So I have to understand that the victory, remember, the victory was supposed to already be won. It's already been taken care of. So if the victory is already won, what is this that we keep fighting? So let's go to the word of God. I want you to get your pen and paper. I always, I always suggest that you do because there's some, there's some good scriptures that you need to go back. You need to meditate on because you need to remind yourself. We have that default in our head that always goes back to the way that we're used to thinking, the way that we're used to moving. The word of God says that you need to learn to do good. So that means that it's not already embedded in you. You've got to learn. And how do you learn? You study. You study and you absorb and you make it become a part of you. So that's how you come out of what you're in. So I want you to get some papers get some paper get a pen get your phone whatever you take notes in and just take the scriptures down so that you can have something to reference all right all right so tonight fighting the endless war i am no longer 
fighting. I'm no longer scrapping in the spirit. I'm no longer doing that. I'm not. I am fighting. You've heard me say from the seat of my throne. Remember, I, you and I have an inheritance. Okay. We are heirs to a throne. So whenever you see the king and queen sitting on the throne, they are at a place of rest. They are a place of confidence, a place of surety. They are, they have to operate in wisdom. Wisdom is their defense. Wisdom is their weapon of warfare. They are not, they don't have to get down and, and fight the battle. Occasionally you might see the king go out and lead and, and that's for, that's for the uh, sake of them knowing that the king is still able to do so. Okay. That is for that sake, but he has an army that he can dispatch. He has, he has advisors. He has all the tools needed that if he never left his seat, things would still get accomplished. So I am at a place that because of who I am in God, I want to sit on my throne and dispatch my armies. I want to sit on my th throne and receive from my advisors. I want to hear from the Holy Spirit. I want to move in that manner. And that is a place of surety. That is a place of peace. That is a place of comfort. How can you have comfort in the midst of the in the midst of a war because I'm not physically overexerting myself? Okay, you know I can go a little fast. When we are in these battles, when these things are coming up against us, we always, and this was my favorite thing, I'm going to fix it. I'm working on it. I'm taking care of it. And all that, that always entailed me doing something physically. Me moving in a place where I'd be worn out. I got a headache because I'm overthinking. Um, I'm tired because I've ran all around the city trying to take care of what, because I consider myself, I'm a hustler, you know, and, and that word, I don't even want to use that word anymore because hustling, even the word, it exemplified overexertion. It exemplified moving in matters that I didn't have to move. So I was wearing myself out trying to take care of this thing physically when God said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Now, let's go to the first scripture. The first scripture I want to give you is this, because this is key. First John chapter five, verse four. I'm going to read out of the King James and I'm going to read out of the Message Bible. I want you to understand this is before we get going. This is important. First John chapter five, verse four. Okay. For this is King James for whatsoever is born of God. That's you. If you're, if you're, if you're born again and you've accepted the Lord as your, your personal savior, then you are born of God. <laughs> Overcome, overcometh the world for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. So it always, you already won. And this is the victory that overcome of the world, even our faith. All right. For those of you that that didn't make any sense to you, let me go to the message Bible. Every God born person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. The person who wins out over the world's ways is simply the one who believes Jesus is the son of God. Okay. So he's already telling you, there's no way that you can lose this thing. If you are a part of him, if you believe in him, you don't lose. It is your God-given authority, capability, privilege. That's what I'm looking for. It's your God-given privilege to have victory. But we don't believe it because we're so used to seeing defeat. We don't believe it because we're so used to the physical, the physical strenuous battles that we're going through that the enemy gives us the illusion of defeat because we're so worn out. When you are worn out in something and you don't have enough strength, you feel like you have lost already and you begin to accept and claim and you begin to possess defeat. Man, I love the Lord because as, as I was getting this word, it gave me such peace <clears throat> It gave me such peace that the, the word became alive in me. Listen, we quote these scriptures. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm telling you, me delighting myself in this word, me having joy in God has been giving me a peace. Yes, I've still got the domino stuff still coming at me every day because that's what the word of God said. It said we would be persecuted. Now, I want to tell you this. This is why you don't understand what you're going through. Listen, I'm a word person. The word of God said we would be persecuted. Okay. What does persecuted 
mean. Watch this. The word of God said we would be persecuted. To be persecuted is to harass or punish in a manner designed to injure, grieve, or afflict. It also, another definition, to annoy with persistent or urgent approaches, such as attacks, pleas, or in, in, um, uh, can't get it. Importunities. I'm sorry. So look, now you think I can't read. Couldn't see. So at the end of the day, look at this. To harass, to punish, to annoy, and persistent in it. Okay? Urgent approaches. So things that make you anxious. Things that come up all of a sudden. This is what he said. Th this is what was going to happen. The enemy was going to annoy us. He was going to be persistent in it. He was going to come at a moment's notice. So to shock us, all of these other things, he was going to come. But we've already defeated that. So don't, don't think it. Don't think it's strange when the enemy comes. Don't think it's strange when bad thoughts come, when when he when somebody is being used and they come to set you off. Don't think it's strange. This is this is a part of life. But that that's the thing that we don't have to we don't have to question. We don't have to question if that's going to come because the Bible says that's going to come. But the Bible also said that we already overcame it. The Bible also said we already have victory. The Bible also said that he's already overcome the world. So we know that that's going to come. We know that that happens. What we have to do is do our part. If he's doing his part steadily, harassing, annoying, trying to punish us, popping up on us. As soon as we get happy, here he comes, popping up on us, all of that. What are we doing? Let me tell you what to do. Romans chapter seven, verse 23. I am reading from King James. And if I'm going too fast, somebody just shoot me, shoot me a message. You're going too fast, apostle. I want you to win and I want to get all this information into you tonight because this victory, this victory in itself, it will change your life if your mind is renewed and transformed in this area. If you can just get your mind right. Remember we did the teaching. The battle is really right here. It's with the thoughts. It's with how you perceive things where you can't. Here it is. I, I gave you that. But you can't perceive it properly without the right information, without exposure to the right information, without exposure to the truth. How There's no other way for you to perceive it but based on your past experiences, which is where we get those negative defaults. So I want a renewing on tonight. We want to re be renewed. We want to be transformed. And how we do that is through the word of God. Now watch this. Romans 7 and 23, King James Version. But I see another law in my members, my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Now, watch this. There's a law in my there's a law warring against the law of my mind. It's warring against what I'm supposed to think. It's warring against the principles and promises of God. And it brings me into captivity. It has me in bondage because this is the way that I think. There is a war going on and it's here. It's against the law of my mind. The law, when I, I'm supposed to perceive the word of God, I'm supposed to process the word of God. I'm supposed to accept and receive it so that I can speak the right thing. See that? That thing's supposed to come out like this. I'm supposed to be able to speak the right things based on what I think. But there's another law that comes in. And that's where the battle is. So we're outside. We're wrestling. We're trying to make things happen. We're trying to force things to happen. And we're sitting here. Some of us are saying, well, I'm just waiting on God. But you have not. You have not did what you were supposed to do mentally. Let me let me share something with you. I, I, I wrote this down because I didn't want to forget it. But the weapons of our warfare. The word of God. Is, the, is a weapon of warfare. That's the laws, the principles, the promises. That is a weapon. That's your arsenal. That's what you use. You don't always have to go out and physically and naturally address certain things. This is what you use. It's a way that you do it. There's a strategy to this. Watch this. This one, uh, Number two, I have a couple things. Number one, the word of God is a weapon of warfare. Number two, your belief You've got to believe the word of God because you can quote scriptures all day long, but your belief in it, your belief is the thing that will carry you over. Number three, positive thinking. 
You've got to be able to when the enemy is telling you the glass is half empty. You've got to be able to say, no, the glass is half full. The glass is half full. Okay, your visualizations is a weapon of warfare. The enemy, how you know it's a weapon because a weapon causes a counterattack. All right, let me just go back. Number one, the enemy tries to distort the word of God or make you think that it's not true. So your counterattack is knowing the word of God. Number two, belief. The enemy tries to get you not to believe, either not to believe the word of God or try to get you to believe that it's not for you. So belief is your counterattack. OK, you don't bring you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. So when he's bringing the knife, you better have yours. When he's bringing whatever he's bringing, you better have something bigger. And these are your retaliate. This is your retaliation. When he's dropping negative seeds in. Oh, this is not going to happen. This person, I know that he, can, the enemy loves telling you things about your spouse, loves telling you things about your children. Oh, they're going to be this way always. How many of you, somebody said that about you? Somebody said that you were never going to be this or never going to be that. And you turned out totally different than what they said. Or they told you that you weren't going to be able to do this or weren't going to be able to do that. And, and you end up doing it. Or if it's not you because you stuck. Have you seen other people that you thought were going to be a certain way? You thought they would always be this way and they end up doing something different. My father, I think it was, um, I think it was in, in between 16, 17 years. My father was addicted to drugs. 16, 16 years. That's a long time. And most people probably say he's going to always do that. This is what he's going to always do. This is what his life is. And that he's living a totally different life now. You know, that's not his life. That's not who he is. But people said they looked at him and said he would never change. But you don't know that. So your, vis your positive thinking, you've got to think positive. Your, the other thing, visualizations. He shows you the worst of the worst. You've got to visualize the opposite of it. That's a weapon of warfare. Each one of these things I can use without leaving my chair. I can, I can apply the word of God through prayer, through declarations and decrees. I can believe with my heart and my mind. I can think positively. I can see the opposite of what he's trying to show me. I can see the better picture. Remember, remember the movie Freddy Krueger. That was one of the, um, one of the, um, there were different ones, part one, part two, one of those parts. And one of the parts, the young lady had finally figured out if you're in the dream world, in your dream world, you can control the dream. And she kicked Freddy Krueger's butt in the movie because for the simple fact, she found out that she could control the narrative of the story. You can control the narrative of the story. But if you keep repeating in your mind what the enemy showed you, which is all doom and gloom, then that's the energy that that's behind what's bringing something to pass. So you're actually being the motor behind what it is he's trying to get done. You're the motor behind his strategy. You're the charge behind his strategy. You're the electricity behind his strategy. You're helping the enemy, but you take something away from him when you begin to see something different, when you refuse to let that be what your visualization is, when you refuse to accept that as your reality and you begin to create a new reality within your mind, that's a weapon of warfare. Number five, declarations and decrees. Once you've made your new visualization, once you started thinking positively. Then you start to declare. You start to decree. What's a declaration? Some of you just go ahead and let me say stuff and you don't know what I mean and you won't ask a question. A declaration, let me put it in plain terms. A declaration and a decree. When I declare something, I'm letting you all know. Let me let you all know. When I let you all know, when I say something to you, the way I've said it, you you most times you see it instantly. If I say I'm going to be rich. The ones that don't like me seeing me being rich and not, they're not liking it at all. <laughs> the ones, the, the, the ones that love me are excited because they're seeing me wealthy. So I put a declaration out there as to what I make. I'm giving you, serving you notice. 
that this is what it is, okay? Why do I do that? Not to tell my business. I serve notice because I don't have to have anybody in the room to give a declaration. I serve notice because the word of God says what? You all know it's one of my favorite scriptures. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So I serve notice to bring life to it. I serve notice to put energy behind it. I serve notice to put my motor and my, my energy behind that particular thing. Now, what is a decree? It's a law, really. It's legal. It says I have the authority per the word of God. I declare and decree that decree is because the authority that God has given me, the authority that God has entrusted me with, I have the right to say it. Now, my declaration is I just said it. My decree is because I was born to, because I have the authority to. So you have to say your declarations and decrees. How does that work? In the morning, get up. I'm powerful. I'm prosperous. I'm resilient. I'm beautiful, I'm strong, I'm renewed, I'm restored, I'm revived. You declare it when you get up. You declare it throughout the day. When somebody's tearing you down and telling you what you're not, you declare it. You see the opposite. You think the opposite and then you declare and decree it. I am everything that God called me to be. I am wonderfully made. Wondrously made. I am amazing. I can do innovative things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am not a failure. I am a success. Start speaking over the things in your life. Talk to yourself during the day. I told you this before. Some of you are ashamed to talk to yourself, but the enemy is talking to you every day. Okay. The enemy is talking to you every day. Now, what is this fighting about? The one thing you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. See, some of you, Think that I'm supposed to be fighting so I can win. That's why you're losing. Why are you fighting to win something that's already won? What we, A lot of people are fighting wars that they don't even know what they're fighting for. And that's always a problem. When you're going to a war and don't know what you're fighting for. The war that you're fighting is to defend what's already won preserve what's already won, bring into manifestation what's already won. That is what your war is. Your war is to make sure that this thing is manifested in your life. It's already done. Victory is already done. Every need you have has already been supplied. Every desire, every, every godly, let me say that, every godly desire that you want is already prepared. God doesn't have to go recreate anything. Everything is already here. Peace. He said, peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. Peace I leave with you. It's already in you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You have a garment of praise. Everything to bring you out of that heaviness. Everything to bring you out of that void, out of that place of lack. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about emotionally. I'm talking about spiritually. That place of lack where you're missing something. Everything you need is already at your fingertips. So the thing that you're warring, the reason that you have to counterattack with belief, the reason you have to counterattack with positive thinking, the reason you have to counterattack with visualizations is so that you can defend what you've already got. It's protecting it. You can preserve it, what you've already been given and blessed with through promises of God. And you can bring it into natural manifestation because it's in the spirit realm. We need to bring it so that we can utilize it in the earth realm. Earth realm. <laughs> Amen. Okay. So then that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Then there is a why we're doing it. Okay. Why are we doing it? Second Timothy chapter 4 and 18 and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me until his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever amen we're doing it so that we are delivered from the persecution so we can process through the persecution so we are preserved until which time <laughs> until whatever time the time you know I don't want to get into in time, this time, that time, whatever time we are preserved. Okay. That is, that is the, that is the why. That is the why we're doing this. We're doing it to be preserved. We're doing it to maintain the promises of God. We have a reason for doing this. Amen. Love it. Love it. Love it. I just lost my, I just lost my last scripture. Romans 7 and 23. Did I already give that to you? I thought I already gave it to you. 
that I already give it to you. I'm just excited. I'm excited because when the word of God, when you know the word of God, it's not about, it's not about just quoting the word of God. It's not about just saying it. We have to apply this word of God. We've got to start using it. You've got to start speaking. We speak so much. I know that I'm, I'm a talker. Okay. I am a talker and I, I could talk all day long when I'm going through something. I complain. I become a, um, I could be on the nagging side. Okay. Um, yeah, I did give you seven and 23. I can be on the nagging side. And, and with that being said, it's the same thing about the complaining side. When something bothers me, I am the biggest complainer. You could, you, you know, when I'm tired of, it. you know, when something is bothering me, cause I keep talking about it. And I learned that. But the enemy already knew that about me because that's what I did. I talk, 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 talk. Some bother me. I talk about it. I talk about I'm mad about this. I'm mad about that. And then it gets clicked over into my feelings. I should have did this. I should have did that. I feel this way. I feel that way. All of it, though, was a motor behind what the enemy had already put in place. He put a vehicle that couldn't move. It had no power. I gave it the power with the reinforced confessions. I'm so tired. I'm worn out. It's like God has left me. I'm waiting on God. Well, why are you waiting on God? And he said, as long as God is with you. When he said God is with you, what he meant, some of you saying, hey, God, you forgot about me. You said you'll never leave or forsake me. Yeah, but him leaving you is his presence. He can't leave or forsake you because he's already within you. So when you think that you've been forsaken, is because you don't take God with you. What do I mean by that? If he's already in me, how can I not take him with me? By not applying the word of God. So you're not causing the manifested presence of God to be operative in your life. That's a difference. What is that? For, 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 for regular speaking, for practical speaking, what is that? God is with me, but we talked about this before. I haven't tapped him in. I'm not utilizing what he gave me. I use an example all the time. Yes, I like that. Consciously aware of God. Thank you, Dr. Bradshaw. I use this all the time. It's if one of my children, after I've went to the store, I've bought them groceries. I've got groceries all in their kitchen, all on their table. I've got groceries laid out for them. And one of my adult children comes and says, Mom, I'm hungry. I'm starving. I'm looking at them kind of weird because... I took care of that already. I gave you, I blessed you. I gave you what you needed. All you have to do is go in there and pick up one of the hot dogs, pick up one of the hamburgers. I gave you what you need. So I use that as a practical example. God has already given us what we need. It's sitting right there, but you're feeling rejected because you're not picking it up using it. You're not picking it up, the, applying it. You're not defending the victory. There's victory within you. You are not defeated. There is victory within you. There's victory before you. There's victory that's do you there's victory that you have the privilege of experiencing but you will not defend your victory you will not protect your victory you will not preserve your victory listen when god blesses you you get too comfortable you get we get too comfortable and when we get so comfortable, we forget that we still have to put on the armor of God. We forget that we still have to praise him. We forget that we still have to meditate on him and make him our visualization when nothing is going on, when nothing is going wrong. We forget that we still have to give him his just due and make sure we're still being intimate with him and make sure we're still connecting with him. That is a defense. We're building up our spiritual immune system. So that when these persecutions come, these annoying things, these urgent attacks, this persistent enemy, I give him no motor. I give him no charge. They used to say when, when somebody got you going in the world, they put the cables on you. They jump started you. They got you ready. The enemy is putting the cables on you to help him run. But you are not allowing it to be mo you are not allowing the motor to be running for the things that will get you going where you need to go for real, for real. You are not doing what needs to be done so that your victory can be preserved. You are not losing. 
Some of you going through some stuff. Man, this was a fast teacher. Some of you are going through some things and it seems like it never ends. But you are not applying what needs to be applied. So what's happening is, what's happening, you're allowing the enemy to leave his bag. And then he comes and leaves another bag. And then he comes and drops off another bag. So you end up having all this weight that you didn't protect. You didn't secure yourself. You didn't, you didn't make sure that the premises were protected. By thinking positive, by believing, by visualizing, by speaking. You didn't, you didn't apply the word of God. So now you've got all this weight on you and now you're so tired you can't even stand up to be able to declare and decree. He got you. I had this one teaching. It's on my, it's on my YouTube. I have a, a teaching called, you should have caught me while I was sleeping. I think it's still on there. You should have caught me while I was sleeping. I used to always say that because when I was sleeping means when I was not conscious. When I was not conscious, when I was unaware, when I was so bogged down by the cares of this world, when I was so bogged down with whatever my problem was, you should have caught me then because when he gave me a minute to get to my corner and be revived, when he gave me a minute to get to my corner and be restored, when he gave me a minute to get back to the word of God that I needed for my defense, that I needed for my preservation, that I needed for my manifestation, when he gave me a minute, when I got a minute, and, and let me let me correct myself. It's not him giving me a minute. When God made the way of escape so I could come up for air, I took well advantage of that way of escape. I took full advantage of my moment to get back up. Listen, I've done a lot of talking tonight. I've done a lot of talking to you guys tonight. And I know once you're in a place of weariness like that, it is hard to get back up. Once you're in a place where you feel like you've done all that you could do and somebody is telling you, you need to muster up some strength to make a declaration or a decree or to see something better. It's hard to do that. I've been in that place where I couldn't even get out the bed. It, it took me forcing myself to go just grab a shower, take one step, take another step. I think I, th I taught that when I when I taught about the, the different layers and different levels of depression. I know that it's not easy. I know it's not easy, but you have to do it in order to motorize your defense, in order to motorize your manifestation of your acknowledgement of your victory, because you've got the victory, but you've got to see it manifested in your life. You've got to begin to see some good things. You've seen so many bad things. You've got to get up and be able to do that. And maybe that's why this teaching was a little bit short because what I'd like to do, I'd like to pray for you. Um, I'd like to pray for those who are having a hard time mustering up the strength to get back up, who are having a hard time coming out of this mold. The enemy has bullied you into a corner, bullied you with negative thinking, bullied you with situation after situation, not letting you come up for air, not letting you, not allowing you to experience the joy in the Lord. You can't, you haven't been able to do it because he's been smothering you with situation after situation. He's been doing his job. He's been annoying you. He's been persistent. He's been attacking you. There's some things going on and you are weary. You are weary. You don't, you don't know where to go. And, 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 and I'll say this, there is, we have our, we have our email address on. If you want to inbox me, if you want to message me, or you want to shoot us an email or go on our website and contact us for something private, you are very welcome to do so. We don't share any information. If you want private prayer, that type of thing, we are very, we, 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 we want to do that. Okay. Because we want to help you get through. Remember I teach it's moment by moment. We want to help you get through the moment so you can get to the next moment. So you can get to the next moment until you finally walking up on the manifested victory, the manifestation of the victory. You, you have the victory, but you need to be able to see it in the natural. This was never meant to be a natural fight. It was never meant to be a physical fight. We think there's something we're supposed to be doing physically. And that way we're getting worn out. We're overthinking. We're overthinking. We're so busy. Watch this. I want to share this with you. We're so busy trying to think of a strategy to fix things. When the strategy that you should be thinking of is as easy as a visualization. 
It's as easy as a belief. Because when you do those things, then you're allowing, you're submitting unto God then. Remember, submit yourselves. Apostle Rasha, Dr. Rasha always says this. Make sure you don't forget the first part. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, but submit yourselves unto the Lord is first. So if you're submitting yourself, then none of those can prosper. None of those weapons, none of those attacks. Submitting yourself means then God can give you strategy. God can speak to you about which way to go and it can be done effortlessly and it can be a sweatless victory. Sweatless victory means I don't have to wear myself out. I don't have to wear myself out to receive what it is that God so mercifully gave me. When you give me a gift, I don't have to work for it like that. I don't have to, I don't have to wrestle for it. I don't have to compete for it. A gift is given. There is a gift. We've been given a gift of life. We've been given a gift of salvation. We've been given a gift of victory. So you're wrestling for something that belongs to you. It's already given to you. So Father, we just thank you on tonight. God, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you for your very powerful weapons of warfare, God. We thank you for the magnitude that comes with them, God. The effectiveness that comes with them, God. Lord, we're asking that anything be moved out of the way that would block us from seeing what our strategy is to maintain our victory, God. Open our eyes, God. Let us no longer be blind, Father. Let us have a clear view, a clear path as to what we're supposed to do. Wherever we're deficient, God, in using our arsenal, God, reveal it to us, God, and then reveal us how to reveal to us how to properly use it. God, there are some people that are weary. They are worn out, God. You said the joy of the Lord is their strength, God, is our strength. God, revive them. You say you renew their strength daily. God, revive them, renew them. God, give them a way of escape on tonight, God. Give them that moment, that energy, that supernatural burst, God, where they can get up and, God, be redeemed in you, God. Be redeemed in victory. Be redeemed in power, God. Walk in the path for which you gifted us in, God. Walk in the authority for which you've gifted us in, God. Lord, I thank you, God, that the domino effect stops tonight, God. I thank you that the cycles are broken on tonight, God. No more back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back annoying persecution, God, for we will begin to use the weapons of warfare. We will begin to think positively, God. Put positive images before us, God. Let us see the good, God. Let us show us how to visualize what is good, what is promised for us, God. So that we may speak the right words, God. Guard our tongue, God. Help us be able to say the things that are supposed to be said that will energize, that will motivate, that will start up what needs to be started up to move forward in our victory, Father. God, we thank you, God. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your revelation, God. We thank you for each individual, God. As they went through, they went through in your name, God. And now it is revival time, God. It is restoration time, God. You are the redeemer of times, God. We thank you that their times are being redeemed, Father. Father, and we thank you, Father. That we will learn how to speak over our own life. We will learn how to see positive things for our own lives. We will learn how to not waver in our belief, God. But we will stand flat-footed on your word, God. And when we have done all to stand, we will continue to stand even more, God. In your word, being sure that our victory is already given to us, God. Being accountable to what our assignment is to maintain, to defend, to protect, to preserve what you already gave to us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So, um, I wanted to pray that prayer because I, I, I just keep feeling a connection to that because I have been there. I have been where I couldn't say anything, where I couldn't get up where I didn't, I didn't have the desire. Grief had a hold on me. Um, the, the, the fight had a, had worn me out. I had, I was losing the battle, but 
how can I lose a battle that had already been won for me because I jumped in and was fighting for the wrong reasons. I jumped in and was fighting to win something that was already won, which was like swinging at the air. So I exhausted myself in that. So I had to understand what I was fighting for. It was for the protection, for the defense, for the manifestation. And I want you to understand that fight from a place of peace, fight from a place of comfort. I want you to get a scripture on tonight. Listen, I'm, I'm going to make it real practical. We don't have to be deep about this, okay? Whatever it is that you're going through, whether it be depression, whether it be lack, whether it be rejection, whatever it is, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to look that word up, whatever you're going through. I want you to look it up so you can understand really the magnitude of what it is the enemy is attacking you with, okay? If, if the enemy, if, if, if somebody has a weapon against you, you want to know how powerful and how effective that weapon is so you know what to bring to, to the fight, okay? So you know what to bring to defend, okay? So you need to know the magnitude of what you're going through. That's the first thing. And then it's just as easy as this. You don't have to be a Bible toter. You don't have to be quote every scripture, ver, you know, piece by piece. You don't have to do that. You can Google whatever scriptures pertaining to, like I said, my thing you was anxiety, was anxiety. And I would, I first defined anxiety, anxiety. And then after that, I went to scriptures in regard to anxiety and I began to read them. And I, I think they were like, they, they gave me a list on this one site. There were 20 scriptures and I end up, there were two that end up pertaining to me. I connected with, I began to absorb them and it was enough for me. It was enough to help me transition out of that state. It was enough to have me now. It is so absorbed in me. And I've, I've since then continued to, once I got my strength back, I kept studying. I kept pouring in. It was enough to get me out of that place and get me transitioned into the next place. Whereas anxiousness was not a problem for me. Whereas I didn't move the way I used to move because now I had absorbed truth. Now I can defend myself in that area. Now when that attack, when the enemy comes with that, I know how to defend my victory. I'm already victorious in that. I do not suffer from anxiety anymore. So I have to defend it. When he comes, the victory's already won. You can move around. I'm resisting the enemy. He has to flee, but I'm resisting him, not just by saying, you, you have to leave here. I'm resisting him by applying the word. I'm resisting him by letting him know I already got peace. I possess it. You can't take it from me. You don't have the right to move it. It is my possession. It belongs to me. And I do not surrender it. I use the word of God to defend my victory. So you have a victory. I know it doesn't feel like it sometimes, but you do have a victory. Get up and defend it. Get up and possess it. Get up and take hold of it. So we can stop going through these cycles. So that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. I know it was a quick message. We didn't even make the full hour and I'm not going to drag that out. I just want you to survive. Okay. I know what it's like to feel like you're not. I know what it's like to feel like you're giving up. I want you to survive and I want you to know how. I don't want to just tell you get up and be happy. I want to tell you how you get to be happy. I want to tell you how you get to walking in your peace, walking in your joy. And I hope that the messages that we're giving is being instrumental in that. So tonight, tomorrow night, we have prayer. It is on teleconference, which means that it's on the telephone. All you have to do, there's a number that's going to be posted. All you have to do is pick up your phone. We have people that come on and never say a word. They just want to be in the atmosphere of prayer. That's okay. We don't mind that. Just come on in. We have that prayers at 7 o'clock. Pick up the phone, dial. You don't have to have a code or anything. We've got a one number, so you just dial straight in and come into the atmosphere. If you want have prayer requests, you can freely speak on that line. We want you to join us because that prayer is that word of God. That prayer is a part of that declaration and decree. So we need to be in the midst of that if you're not already doing it at home. Or if you just want somebody to stand in agreement, all of it works. We are helpers to one another 
every piece of the puzzle is important. The, remember we used to say it takes a village to raise a child? Well, we're the child, okay? We're, we're, we're God's children. We're, we're, we're the child. And when I say that, that means it takes all of us helping. It takes all of us praying. It takes all of us being proactive in the word of God. How does the enemy use people to get it? How does the enemy use things to get at us through our thoughts and through other people? So it's the same way. That's the same way God gets a blessing to us. It's the same way sometimes God ministers restoration through to us through other people. So we have to be helpless to one another. So I have talked long enough. I'm probably almost talking to the hour. I have talked long enough. Don't forget we are on here Sunday. And if you miss anything or if you don't see a video or you want extra videos on some of our teaching, Greater Revelation World Outreach Ministries is also on YouTube. I think I'll, I'll, I'll edit the page and fix that. And then I have also a page, a YouTube page myself, Apostle Sherelle. So I'll put that information up in case you just want to hear some other teachings as well. But we love you. Rest well on tonight in peace, in joy, in strength, in restoration. Have a good night.